Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we're talking about Master Check by New Gen Audio. So Master Check allows you to hear what your stuff is going to sound like on various platforms. Platforms these days, in response to the loudness wars, have standards that they've set up, and you have to submit to their standards. The reason is, for example, I'm on the YouTube preset. They've got a bunch of presets here. They will set up a standard saying like, hey, you need to submit things, and they cannot be louder than negative 13 LKFS. And the reason is, we were that we were having problems with people submitting things that just were way louder and way softer, and you, as the consumer, would reach for your volume knob, and there's the whole thing where if it sounds louder, you think it sounds better. So this is a way of quickly dealing with that. So they set up these standards, and if it goes beyond this value, they're gonna turn your stuff down. You can actually go on the website and check out what these are. These do change over, over time. They will set up new standards. A lot of the stuff used to be negative 16, and now it's negative 13. Uh, for example, TV stuff's usually like negative 24. And so you've got to mix way softer for TV than you would for, say, YouTube. And so you want to know about this stuff depending on the material you're doing. So uh, let's just go ahead and talk about the various meters, and I'm going to show you sort of how you would use it. So if we play this here, we have an integrated meter here. So this is sort of checking out our loudness over time. And we want to hit this green region. Now it's going to go up as if the song plays because it's going to say, oh, this is actually louder and louder and so on and so forth. Uh, next to it, we have what's something that Nugent came up with called the peak loudness ratio. Um, it is a ratio between the loudest part of your song and the, the average dynamics of your song. And so this is sort of a measure of dynamic range. In their manual, they suggest anywhere between 8 to 15. And this PSR is sort of like a, a short-term measurement. If you want the long-term measurement, you need to play your whole song through and then look up here and see what it says. My computer is going to have a little bit of a hard time with OBS in the background, just so you're aware. So, okay, so those are the meters. We can see I'm right here in the green, so I am pretty good to go for uploading for what I want to do. I'm a slightly softer. I think there's one moment in this song where I go just a bit over if my computer can keep up with it. Um, and so there's that. Now we can check out these. Now this is really cool. So we have meter and monitor. So meter is just like hearing what's in our DAW. Monitor is hearing it through these various codecs. And we see there's some distortion with some of these codecs. Some of these codecs are, are clipping where others aren't. So something to be aware of if you're mastering for a specific platform. Like for example, Spotify uses Vorbis. If you look on their thing currently, it says like, oh, we're gonna convert it to a Vorbis file. So you're gonna wanna pay attention to this one. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's see, let's choose monitor. Right now we're on none, but if I click like, for example, Opus, we could check out what it will sound like on Opus. So that's what we're hearing right now. We have our AAC mid two, we have our various options. And then if we hit this right here, this little Sigma symbol or Delta, can't remember, you click this, you can actually hear what it's taking out. It's pretty interesting. Now each codec uses psychoacoustics to sort of mask the fact that they've taken this stuff out. But really, really uh, sort of eye-opening. Um, so anyways, that's the meter, that's the encoder. I'm gonna stop this since my computer's having a hard time. And we see here also we have a meter. This is a true peak meter. So true peak meters, what's so cool about true peak meters is they allow you to see what would happen with a model for what would happen between samples. So for example, let's say I have a sample here and a sample here. For all we know, there could be something that goes up and there's actually like a louder portion. So true peak tries to meter this and model it so that you get how it actually would be. So that's the idea of a true peak meter, really useful. And then these are the individual meters for the individual codex that we have here. You can also go to a mid-side uh, output. So you can see like, oh, how's the mid-side balance of your track? So you see the mid generally is going to be louder. It should be louder unless you're doing something really, really spatial. Uh, so that's the general idea. Now in use, when you're going to use it, you're going to play your song and I would let it play through all the way and just sort of see what your peak loudness ratio is and just get a vibe for where that sits. If it's really low, that's like a kind of a cause for alarm. Your thing's gonna sound very, very static. Probably really loud the whole time. Uh, so watch out for that. 
The, the big alarm though is if you are not in the green. So what you can do is you can play through your song. And remember, you're gonna need to play through some of it because you wanna get how it's gonna react over time. You could also check it in sections. Like for example, I can move over here to this loud section and say, oh, this is when I finally pick up and get close to that. So that's sort of the goal. That's like what I'm aiming to do. Um, if it's not there, we can also click this offset to match and it will adjust it to hit the loudness target. And we'll actually tell you in loudness units um, how much it adjusted by, like a little measurement will pop up. See? So I'd actually would get turned up to hit the target. Here I'm getting turned down. <laughs> or up, I don't know if I reverse those. But anyways, you get the idea. See, I go over for a split second right here. And that's if I play it through this section. So I might come through and touch up this section. You don't want to render with this on really because what you what this is showing you is how your mix would fall when it moves to the target. And so you'd really rather mix and fix it at that target. I have seen some people actually when they're showing how they use this, they'll actually mix with offset to match on and then they'll like turn it off at the end and then they'll make more adjustments. I just use this as a quick insight and then I make some changes and then I see how the changes worked out. That's that's how I go and just keep this up as a meter because your, your readout will actually change here. So it can be a tad confusing if you don't know. Now there is a really cool thing this allows you to do. And it is, it allows you to remove loudness from your signal that's just not useful. Like headroom that's being eaten that shouldn't be eaten. And what it is, is in FL, this is actually a touch confusing too. So you want to be aware of this. Let's say that I want to know, let's find something with some things going on. Here, we'll go with the snare. So I've got a lot going on on the snare. I want to know if the snare is really being improved. I'm going to turn up my monitoring situation here just a touch. Um, so on the snare, we've got a compressor, a multiband compressor, a reverb, an equalizer, transient processor. You know, does it really sound better with all these things on it. It's hard to do because loudness is changing and we tend to think louder things sound better. So what they have is they have a plugin and there's a specific version you have to load, at least in FL, this is the case. You have to load the VS2, VST2 version of this. Um, so if we type in send, they actually, when you install master check, you get this send plugin that goes with it and install or not install, load up the 64-bit version and we're going to put it at the beginning because we're going to send the audio to the master check and then we'll put a master check we're going to get rid of this one and also just as a as a warning um when you are putting master check on things master check introduces uh quite a bit of latency so if you're going to be like playing things you might want to remove master check from the chain and put it on after. It's a it's a checking plugin, not a real time monitoring. And mixing it shouldn't be much of a problem. Uh, but you may need to just if you have latency, if you notice things are getting out of sync, your DAW might not be accounting for the latency. So just watch for that kind of a thing. But anyways, we're gonna solo the snare, and we're gonna put a master check on this guy at the end. And so the idea is, we will send audio from the send. And I'm gonna click audio through. So if I don't have audio through on and I play this and I'm at a spot where the snare should be. So we see nothing's happening. And let's grab this send back here. But if I turn on audio through, we get our snare coming through. So you have to have audio through on. Ah, this better not be become an issue. So, okay, so it's sending. We needed to send, you see no connection. So if we come into master check, it says not connected. Am I covering this? I am slightly covering this. Oops. Uh, so I'm going to move this up here. Okay, so we're going to go to send one. So you can actually have a bunch of these sends on. So now, if we come into master check, we have this external reference. It's grabbing this send. So you see it's connected to master check. And we have a speaker icon. So when the speaker icon's on, we're going to hear the send. It's going to skip all this stuff. So we won't hear any of our processing. And when it's off, we're going to just hear all our processing because the audio through is on. That's the idea. So let's play it. So let's bypass it all. That's our original. 
Now we want to loudness match it so we can compare and see if our processing is really doing what we want. This is this is great because now I don't need to rely on plugins to input a, a gain equalization option. That's something that I always wish plugins had. Now I can just do it with entire signal chains. So I'm gonna use offset to match. It's going to match the loudness for us. So I'm gonna bypass it, or I'm not gonna bypass it. I'm gonna, let's hear the processing. I would turn it on. So that's what we have. Now we can move the send through our chain and sort of see what individual things are doing. So we'll go. That's the transient processor. I quite like what that adds. There's the EQ. I dig it. And the verb. And finally, the Maximus. And I have a, I'm sorry for the whole computer crapping out right now. I, it's a bit of an intense of a project, I guess, for it to handle. But anyways, you get the idea. That's a really quick way, and I've actually had a ton of fun messing with this in sound design, because it's really cool to see what each step adds at a loudness matched level. A lot of times you don't care in sound design, because at the end you're gonna like make adjustments anyways, but this has been a really cool tool to mess with that. So. Uh, in practice, you're gonna open it up, check your mix, get your levels, and then you might go back and make some more informed decisions. You might listen to it under different conditions in order to update your mix for whatever you're gonna use it for. Uh, I use a lot of the YouTube one, but you may find yourself using more of Spotify. Uh, it also sort of reveals like, you need to mix softer a lot of the times. I find that that's usually an insight people find is like, oh, I actually need to be quite a bit softer in my mixes. Um, and there's this ability to check and remove unnecessary loudness moves from your chain, which is really cool. If you have any questions about this, let me know, subscribe, and have a blessed day.